All right, so I think this is probably the third time I've tried to film this. Um, I have the other side torn apart and uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> so I might put some clips of that in this video, but I'm gonna start fresh on this side and I will uh, show you what I'm gonna do. Um, we're gonna actually install some of these. Um, what do they actually call <laughs> Uh, grease fitting kit for the upper control arms. Um, I was doing something the other day and noticed that my upper control arm uh, grease fittings were directly facing the shock towers on the inside and there's no way to grease them. So I figured before I get too far in depth, um, I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And my first initial try didn't work. I, uh, I grabbed some 90 degree fittings and they're too big. So that didn't work. <laughs> um, so I found these fittings on opentracker.com, um, had them shipped here, took about four days, I think four or five days. Um, they have a low profile block that screws into the control arm and then it has an extended grease fitting that comes out. So we're going to give that a shot and uh, this is not a how to video. <laughs> um, I tried to do that with the other side and I forgot how to do it myself. So I'm just going to kind of guide you along and uh, show you how I do it. I figured since it's up on the lift, I'd give you guys a overview of like the undercarriage, um, everything that I got done. Um, it's kind of dirty. I did give it kind of a wipe down, but you can see some of the wet sanding schmoo was underneath it. So, um, but there's the hot rod black in the engine bay. Here's all the steering components. Got little paint dubs. Um, there's the spindle, brakes, all that stuff. Came out pretty good. Uh, lighting's kind of crappy, uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit once I get the tire off. But um, So originally this car was a slop paint undercarriage, which means Ford took all their extra paint, just kind of dumped it into a big vat and then sprayed the undercarriage of the car, um, whatever color. So it was kind of like a blackish blue green kind of a weird color but i always like the red oxide um undercarriage but this came out a little bit more orange and it's i don't know it'll work um i ended up doing it in single stage paint that way it's got a little bit more longevity than just primer and i don't i'm not going to undercoat it it's going to be how it is right now um so all new brake lines um, on the front and then let me get out of the way of the light here. So here's the rear end. That's actual red oxide primer for the pumpkin itself. But I did um, paint all the shields and stuff, the factory colors. Um, when I was cleaning the rear end housing, I did find that paint mark. So I just replicated it. Um, there's the lowering blocks we put in the last video, but you can see I kind of had a couple whoopsies on the rear end housing, but I can, I can touch those up. No big deal. Um, still need to take care of that vent hose, but new shocks. Uh, the springs are factory springs. Wow. They are dirty. <laughs> um, but I busted all of them apart, sandblasted them there. Uh, actually a wire wheel those. And then painted them cast, cast metal or cast iron paint, and then put new straps on it and all that stuff. So, but yeah, I figured I'd give you guys a. Oh, let me try to crawl back up here. 
a uh, overview of the car underneath it. All right, so at this point, shock is out. Um, basically the only thing keeping the spring in right now is the upward pressure from the tire being on the ground. Um, and I actually have lowering springs on here. So uh, I did use my spring compressor on the other side, but I don't think I need it since they are so short. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is uh, Put a broom handle or something down through here just in case the safety backup but um, if all else fails the broom handle will break when the spring flies out and hits me in the face so not only do i get hit with a spring i'll end up getting some awesome splinters in my face too so yeah let's do that All right, so here is the issue. Um, see that grease fitting? It is right up against the shock tower. So this front side actually has a little bit more clearance. So um, you can see I did the Shelby drop on this a while ago. And uh, yeah, let's get this upper control arm off and uh, we'll replace these grease fittings. I think this back one will probably have to uh, clearance a little bit but no big deal we'll make it work all right so i took the wheel off to give myself a little bit more clearance um the nuts on the control arm are off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to support the brake spindle hub whatever you want to call it um with the jack that way i can get this out of the way and get these uh zerk fittings off there Works out and uh, get the new ones in. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is the one that came out. And if you remember, it was almost touching the shock tower in the back, so. If this one's threaded in the same, we might be all right. I don't know if you can see that, but it's about the same. If I can get this threaded in deeper or as deep as it was, I think we might be all right. Let's give it a shot. All right, now we just get to thread these in. 
you want to take any bets on if they're the same size as the other ones, they are, which is 930 seconds. Don't have to go super tight with the ones going into the bushing. Just snug enough. You go too tight, you pull the threads out. Ask me how I know. Let's give this a shot, see what happens. going to be good. Let me see if I can smash my fingers while I'm trying to do this one-handed. All right, there we go. Two fittings have been changed. Now we can grease it whenever we want and not uh, have to drill a hole in the shock tower. All right, there it is. Um, like I said, it wasn't really a how-to video. Um, I did do a little bit of instruction, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. I did struggle with this side a lot the first time through. Um, just was overthinking it, to be honest with you. So there it is. You can kind of see it. The grease fingers are fittings are a lot easier to access. You can actually grease them right from here. So I'll be sure to do that before it gets on the road. I'm not gonna do it now because uh, I've already had some grease melt out of the fittings and get all over everything. So um, I really don't want that getting in the way of the paintwork stuff. So yeah, just a small project. Um, doing some stuff here and there while it's too cold or like today it's raining so can't do any paint work while it's raining so um yeah i still have some harnesses to restore maybe i'll do a little video on that if you guys want to see that i don't get too crazy with it um i kind of clean them up clean the wires down rewrap the harnesses with some tape and uh wire loom and stuff like that but i guess that'll be my next video um i'm kind of caught up on the mechanical side of stuff as far as i know for right now um, I did get some paint work done this weekend, and here's a little clip from that. Got these sprayed. That looks very textured because it's actually truck bed liner on the inside. So, it's supposed to look like that. It's not extreme orange peel. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it came out pretty good. Digging the color. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, hopefully, the GoPro picks that up. Dark ivy green. Gotta love it. But yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out, guys. Um, I know it's kind of a boring video <laughs> if you're not into this sort of stuff, but yeah, tell me what you want to see next. Um, open to ideas. I don't know, I don't really have any projects for the Mustang, but other than wash it. Um, but I'll try to think of some cool stuff coming up. I'd, I probably won't film any of the paint stuff because that's not my forte and my mental capacity is already maxed out while I'm doing that stuff. So uh, yeah, I'll show you the, the aftermath of it all, but I don't think I'll film the uh, duration of it, so. All right, thanks for uh, watching. Also, pro tip for you guys, hock your puck on your jack plate. That way you don't scratch up your freshly painted surfaces or rear end or what have you. Um, I learned this a little bit too late as I already scuffed up my rear end housing, so.
There it is. Easy peasy. Get you a couple hockey pucks. They come in handy.